I know I'm a week late to the party, but I wanted to talk about the firmware updates coming to the FX cameras later this year, and also a gentle reminder that the A7S III and the Alpha One are also getting new firmware updates, and whether or not Sony is playing a bit of a dangerous game with these kind of ridiculously long lead-ups to what amount to relatively minor firmware updates for cameras. I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, whatever the hell that means. It's always good when companies support products that have been out for years by adding new features. But what's weird or potentially off-putting is what Sony's doing, and I imagine it's marketing, to keep people interested in these cameras by announcing firmware that's not going to come out for up to eight months <laughs> from the initial announcement of the firmware. And I also don't want to be an idiot. Anybody out there who does software development, how long does it take to to write this code and to implement it, to test it, to refine it, et cetera. Because I would imagine you know, that's not a process that can take just days, but does it really take eight months? I forgot to mention in the haste and excitement of making this amazing video, the time frame that Sony is working with with these new firmware. So for the FX3 and 30, the new firmware isn't supposed to launch until September. It's currently January. <laughs> The FX6, on the other hand, is supposed to get its firmware update in May. Going back to the A7S III and the Alpha 1, those firmware updates were announced alongside the launch uh, or the reveal of the A9 III, which took place uh, in the beginning of November of 2023. So six months-ish for that firmware, and then eight months for the FX3 and FX30, and about five months or so for the release of the FX6 firmware. And the dangerous game, you know, maybe that's a little bit of hyperbole, but does Sony risk kind of like pissing people off by announcing these firmware updates so far in advance? And they're not even like game-changing type of firmware. Like shutter angle, as I'm gonna talk about later in this video, is a very important feature that should already be there. But that's the thing, like it should already be there. So you're making people wait eight months for a feature that should already exist in the cameras, in these cinema cameras. It would be more understandable if these updates were something that was like really exciting, something really new that people weren't expecting. But to make people wait eight months to get shutter angle, I think it risks alienating people and maybe backfiring a little bit if Sony keeps doing this kind of stuff. Before we get into the more ranty aspect of this video, I do want to cover what's actually included in these updates in case you've been living under a rock and don't know. The newest firmware announcements include the FX6, the FX3, and the FX30, but the FX6 and the FX3 and 30 are getting separate firmware updates, so they're not getting the same features. So Sony is like continuing along this trend of further and further segmenting different lineups. So the FX6 is getting 1.5x anamorphic de-squeeze to go along with its current 1.3 and 2.0 times anamorphic de-squeeze. It's also getting a monitor and control feature in the monitor and control app what's labeled monitor and control app. I don't know, is that the same thing as the creator app or is that a different app? So I guess they're adding things like waveform and false color into this app. It's also getting some kind of like 3D LUT process to mirror what's in the Venice cameras. I don't know exactly what that means, but it just seems like some kind of LUT that is going to more accurately match the look of the Venice. Lastly, they're adding support for a couple new lenses with focus breathing compensation the 100 to 400 G Master and the 200 to 600 G lens. So that's it for the FX6. What's being added to the FX3 and 30, those are getting the same features apparently. Shutter angle, yay, finally, <laughs> shutter angle to these cinema line cameras, the FX3 and 30. That's cool, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so there's a few more things. There are some new live streaming capabilities into the creator app for these cameras basically like RTMP support, so you can stream directly from the creator app, directly from your phone, without any additional hardware, no, so no other like switcher or hardware streaming thing, and or no other software is needed to stream from your FX3 and FX30 if you use the creator app. I don't know what that has to do with cinema, but anyway, <laughs> a new feature. And then lastly is some clip flags and mark shots kind of things that you can do, um, sort of like building metadata into your clips. This is cool. 
and definitely functional stuff if you are working on bigger productions, if you got lots of cameras, if you have a really complex edit. So anytime you can add in some detailed metadata, that's gonna help organize all that footage on the front end and make it easier to edit. But this is stuff that's really mostly for bigger productions. I don't know how much like smaller solo operators and like maybe small teams are gonna take advantage of these. I mean, you could, glad it's in there. Always good to see new features, et cetera, et cetera. So that's it for the FX cameras. Couple questions and omissions that I have. FX6 and the FX9 have face only autofocus. So if you enable you know, eye tracking, face tracking, autofocus in those cameras, and if whatever's being focused on, like me for instance, if I were to get up and leave, I don't know what actually just happened there. Those cameras will, will keep focus where it was focused instead of racking focus to something in the background, which is what I would imagine happened just now. It's with the FX3 and all the other sort of alpha cameras are just gonna find focus on something else. Face only means that it's just gonna stay locked where it was. It definitely makes it seem like you have a manual focus puller, somebody who's not gonna just like randomly start focusing on something in the background unless there was something you wanted to focus on in the background. So nothing, nothing about that was announced, obviously. And then 1.5X anamorphic going to the FX6, but not going to the FX3 and FX30, even though they have 1.3 and 2X, just like the FX6 has, but they're not getting the 1.5. And obviously no mention of open gate to go along with anamorphic. You would like to see Sony add open gate support to really take advantage of true anamorphic shooting but that's not something that we're getting and that's not something that's in the FX6 or the FX9. You do have to go way up into the real Cine Alta <laughs> cinema cameras to get that. And just as a reminder, the A7S III and the Alpha One are also getting new firmware. We're still waiting because Sony announced that firmware alongside the reveal of the A9 Mark III sometime, I don't know what it's doing with my hand, sometime back in the fall. Going along this, this theme of like, what's the deal with these huge like lead up times to these firmware updates that are relatively minor. The firmware of the A7S III and A1, I think is supposed to come out in March. So still a little ways to go for that. And if you weren't paying attention, the A7S III and the A1 are finally getting focus breathing comp. Crazy that even the A1, that $6,500 flagship, hasn't had focus breathing compensation, but those two cameras are finally getting it. And the A7S III is also getting DCI 4K, and then it's also getting True 24P. Questions and omissions about the A7S III firmware, 48 frames per second in that True 24P mode. I'm not sure, they didn't really mention that, but it's something that came along with the True 24P mode in the FX30, and I imagine it's in the FX3, but it didn't say anything about getting the 48 frames per second S and Q and True 24P in the A7S III. Still no user LUT support, on the A7S III, what the hell? <laughs> no Cine EI. Of course, it's not a cinema camera, right? Why would it get Cine EI? I don't know, why would it get True 24P? Why would it get DCI? Just random, like, segmentation. Just seemed like arbitrary segmentation. And then shutter angle. <laughs> you get the shutter angle in the FX3 and the FX30, not in the A7S III. And I'm not covering the rest of the Alpha One firmware because everything about that camera was photo focused uh, and nothing really video or cinema focused on the Alpha One. Obviously for FX3 and FX30 users, the big update, the big thing is that shutter angle addition, finally. Why is that a big deal? Because I think that having shutter angle is a pretty big deal. Let's talk about it over here. Why a shutter angle is important. I see a lot of people in comment sections of various places talking about it's not that big a deal because A, I don't change frame rates that much or all you have to do is double your frame rate to get to the new shutter speed. That's all well and good. Like I hate when people take their own experiences and extrapolate it out as if it's relevant to everybody. Shutter angle is important for a lot of reasons. And the main thing that people always talk about is when you change your frame rate, you don't have to adjust your shutter speed or your shutter angle to correspond to that new frame rate. If you're in 180 degree shutter, for example, and you go from 24 frames per second to 60 or to 120, then the camera is automatically going to adjust the shutter speed to correspond the 180 degree shutter to the new frame rate. So it makes it easy. You don't have to remember to do it. And that's the big thing is like in the heat of the moment, you wanna change your frame rate to get a different look for something that you're filming. 
you forget to change your shutter speed. You don't have to worry about it if you've got shutter angle. The other reason that it's important and probably more important, at least in my opinion, is if you're not so dogmatic about 180 degree shutter and you actually want to change your shutter for reasons like if you even if it's just exposure that's fine like you can actually use your shutter speed and your shutter angle to adjust the exposure of your shot you don't have to be so rigid and keep it at 180 just because that's the rule that's not the 180 degree rule by the way that's a different thing but if you want to change it for effect then it's way easier to change it to a different angle than it is to change it to a speed because we all have the knowledge or the experience of what different shutter angles look like based on the history of filmmaking. We can call up different examples that we've seen of times when movies have been shot or scenes have been shot at say 270 degrees. You know what it's gonna look like and if you want to replicate those effects, it's super easy just to change your shutter angle from 180 to 90 or 45 or 270 and you know what you're gonna get. But if you're stuck with shutter speed, what is the corresponding shutter speed to a 90 degree shutter angle for whatever frame rate you're in? That takes an actual math equation to figure out. And if you're like me and you suck at math, numbers get all jumbled in your head, that's not something that is going to be super easy to, to accomplish. I have made a video in the past going into shutter angle and I showed what the actual equation is in that video. But more importantly, I gave the answers to a lot of the most common shutter angles, what that corresponding shutter speed is in the description. And I'm going to copy that information down into the description of this video. So if you'd like to have that handy cheat sheet, there you go. That's my actual value for you watching this video and listening to me rant about Sony's firmware updates. To sum up, it is important that Sony is finally offering shutter angle in cameras that it markets as cinematic. However, you've got to wait till September. <laughs> and that brings me back to the ranty portion of this video. What is going on with this concept of announcing these firmware updates six, seven, eight months in advance of actually releasing the firmware? Because I don't remember that being the case in the past. I would imagine like an announcement, maybe a month or two out to let people know it's coming. But there's a lot of times when firmware just gets released without really any major press release or any sort of fanfare. And now Sony's like doing this you know, huge announcement, like these features are, are something major, they're worth waiting eight or nine months for, as opposed to just just giving them to, the, to us when they're ready. So that's why I let off this video with a question, does it really take eight months to add these features into firmware? And if it does take eight months, then why announce it so far in advance? Why not announce it when it's actually closer to being ready? So my thinking is that yes, it's this like kind of marketing strategic plan, it's probably a very easy and cheap way to keep these cameras in everybody's collective self-consciousness. Like we know that sometime in this year that the FX3, FX30, and FX6, along with the A7S III, are going to get important new firmware updates. Great. They're in the news cycle. You can Google them. These things are going to pop up. You're going to have videos like this stupid one that are gonna come up in the YouTube search and they're gonna pop up all throughout this year. It's free marketing, it's easy marketing. Keeps these cameras in the conversation for a long time. And in the case of all these cameras that are getting firmware updates this year, it probably means one of two things. Number one, none of these cameras are getting a physical update. So there's not gonna be any Mark IIs and Mark Threes or Mark IVs of any of these cameras this year. And this is Sony's way of keeping them relevant throughout the course of the year. Or maybe in the case of the A7S III and the Alpha 1, maybe they will get updates, physical updates, as in new camera bodies later in the year. So it keeps people interested in their A7S III and their Alpha 1, not wanting to jump ship, maybe not going to Canon or Nikon, knowing that, hey, we're finally getting some reasonably significant updates to these cameras, and then Sony is gonna release actual physical new cameras later on in the year. And in the case of the FX cameras, it probably means that we're not getting any new physical cameras in 2024 at all, but don't leave us, you know, because we've got significant updates coming to the current cameras later on this year. Or maybe it means in the FX cameras that there is a new update coming. There is an FX30 Mark II, FX3 Mark II coming at the end of the year but don't leave yet because your current camera is gonna get an update. And again, Sony's a corporation, they're in it to make money, however they see fit to do that, we shouldn't be surprised. And what they're doing here isn't exactly like immoral or, or anything that we should be worried about. It's just kind of annoying. At least they continue to support their cameras. And in the case of the A7S III, it's going on into its what, fourth year, fourth or fifth year, I'm bad at math, 2020, 21, 22, 23, 
it's going into its fifth year of existence and it's still getting significant new updates. And that's the other thing to keep in mind too, is like these cameras don't have to get updates. They don't have to get new features. We bought them based on what they were. And Sony doesn't really owe you anything. It doesn't owe you new features in a camera that you've already bought. So it's good that they're doing it. So I don't really know, like, what's the point of complaining about it? The last thing that annoys me is how much they keep segmenting these cameras completely arbitrarily. I already touched on the fact that if you want to make the argument that the A7S III or any of the Alpha cameras aren't the cinema line, first of all, quit being such a dingus. <laughs> uh, and two, well, it's again, it's completely arbitrary because the A7S III is getting DCI, which very much is a cinema thing. It, that's that's cinema 4K. It's also getting true 24P. Again, that's is only relevant if you're actually making movies for projection in cinema. Why have some and not all of the cinema features? It's totally arbitrary. And then again, the FX6 is getting anamorphic de-squeeze modes that the FX3 and the FX30 aren't getting. It's getting different LUT support that those cameras aren't getting, even though they're all FX cameras, right? To further strengthen my argument that these are totally arbitrary, the whole product line of the FX cameras below the FX6 and the FX9 is a completely made up thing. Because what Sony did was take an A7S III and chop off a very expensive component, that being the EVF. And the EVF in the A7S III is amazing. It's still top of the line EVF. I would imagine that that is a pretty expensive component of any camera, especially when it is a really high quality state of the art EVF. They remove it and then they add in a audio top handle, which is the same bit of componentry that they've been making in the K3M for years and years and years. I would guess, again, not as, as somebody who is not an expert, but my guess would be that the EVF in the A7S III is more expensive to manufacture than the audio component in the top handle of the FX3 and the FX30. You've essentially made it much cheaper to manufacture the FX3 and you're charging more money for it. And they've created like an entirely new segment of camera out of, out of nothing. Again, there's nothing different about the FX3 and the A7S III internally. They're the same camera. So Sony's making a lot of money on cameras that I am willing to bet are some of their cheaper ones to manufacture. And they've created an entirely new product segment to, to justify doing that, what I'm saying is it's all arbitrary. So please, I don't want people in the comments to be like, well, it's the cinema line. Bullshit. It's something that was totally created out of nothing to sell cameras. <laughs> don't be a person who takes what the massive corporation says at face value. That's it. That's just me ranting. Um, let me know what you think just about the firmware in general, the updates that are coming to all the cameras the strategy behind Sony announcing them so far in advance, and anything else that you would like to talk about, um, and your opinion on shutter speed versus shutter angle.